So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Roman numeral notation for chords. So here we have the key of C major. Um, as you can see, the notes at the bottom there and the uh, respective chords right above them. So if you remember, this, the first note, so in the key of C is C, would be the, the first note of the scale. D to second, E to third, so on and so forth. So you can consider the, the C triad to be the first chord in the key of C major. Um, and then the second chord would be D, the second note is D, so the second triad would be the D minor triad. And that pattern continues all the way down until you get to the B. And that would be the seventh in that scale. So as you can see, I've written out the Roman numeral equivalents for the chords. Uh, you know, your numbers one through seven, but as you can see, I wrote some of them a little differently. The 1, 4, and 5 are written in capital letters. The 2, 3, 6, and 7 are all written in lowercase letters. And the 7 has that little circle next to it. So the reason we, they're written differently is if they're written in capital letters, it means it's a major triad. If they're written in lowercase letters, it means they're a minor triad. If they're written in lowercase letters with that circle, it means it's a diminished triad. And you can kind of see that by the chords written out there below the Roman numerals. Uh, so you can kind of see that pattern there. Uh, one of the biggest advantages to using a Roman numeral system instead of numbers is if you just wrote like a 1 or a 3, you might get a mistake for a triad, maybe an inversion of a chord. But if you write with the Roman numerals, you can easily tell that it's meant to be a chord. In, a, in addition, you can write the Roman numeral in a capital or lowercase form. So you can tell if it's major or minor, minor just by looking at the, the notation itself. You can't really do that with numbers. Another big advantage in using the Roman numeral system opposed to using the letter chords uh, is if you wanted to transpose your music. So let's say you had a chord progression of 1, 4, 6, 5. It's fairly standard chord progression, but let's say you put that in the key of C. So you'd have a C, F, A minor, back to a G. Uh, so you have that, that's great. And then you want to shift keys or transpose keys up to like to D. But you don't have music for that. However, if you have the Roman numeral notation and you know your key scales, you know that in the key of D, the 1 will be a D, the 4 will be a, a G, the 5 will be uh, an A, and then the 6 will be a B. So you can do the, the D, G, B, a, and you can have that without having to get new music for the piece of music you're trying to play. So the Roman numerals I showed you would be for the for the major scale. However, the minor scale also has Roman numerals. Uh, so in the minor scale, let me get the I'm written out here. Uh, notice that the one, the two, and the other they're all sort of written differently. So it, it's going to be a little hard to remember the difference between the two of them. However, there is a trick that I'm going to show you. So if you see in the C, in the major versus the minor, the first chord is always the the form of the first chord always matches the scale you're in. So if you're in a major scale, the first chord will be mi uh, major. If you're in a minor scale, the first chord will be minor. Um, so that's easy to remember. And then something else you can note is that the four and the five are always the same form as the first. So if the first is major. 4 and the 5 will also be major. So if you're in a minor scale, the 1st is minor, and the 4 and the 5 are also minor. And then, so the next part to remember is where the diminished belongs. Um, for me, it's hard to remember that in a major scale, the diminished is the 7th, and in a minor scale, the diminished is the 2nd. That's a little thing that you have to remember. There's not really any easier pattern way to remember that. Um, so then you have chord and you should have three chords left so if you're in a minor scale those last two chords are major because you've done your minors as the one four five you got your diminished as the second so then the three the six and the seven you know are going to be major another and in the major one you know that the last three ones you'll have will be a minor the two the three and the six because you have your one five four five as major your seven as diminished so the rest must be minor Another way you can look at this is for you, you, if you memorize the pattern for the major, just have the minor, but start with the sixth. So C minor, it's going to, well, any minor, it's going to follow the same pattern as if you just started on the sixth. So the sixth would then become a one, 
7 becomes a 2, but it stays diminished, and the forms all stay the same. So you can follow the pattern that way if that works for you as well. I hope you guys found this helpful, and I hope you can use it in trying to read or write your music. Enjoy.